Happy holidays, Danielle. Happy Hanukkah, Casey Wilson. Merry Christmas. Yeah, people say that people... Happy that Kwanzaa. Happy all everything. Of them, all of them. Yeah. People say... I, I saw something online today that's like, say happy Christmas to a snowflake. They get all bent out of shape. And I'm like, you can say whatever the fuck you want to me. I can't imagine getting upset by someone saying Merry Christmas, Happy Christmas, whatever. Just say it. Mm. Just a nice comment. This is like bringing, triggering me when that radio station said that I single-handedly wanted to take Baby It's Cold Outside off the airwaves. What? Remember? Because I did a funnier... Remember? Oh. Oh, I remember you doing that, but I didn't hear about the backlash. <laughs> I can't believe I'm bringing this up again, but because Scott Ackerman and I did a funnier dies catch, yes, where that. it's like obviously about like a man taking, you know, taking advantage of a woman. But yes. it's just funny, yeah. to, to to look at it. Men is it funny? Night. And yeah. then all these like websites picked it up of like Casey Wilson wants this song off the airwaves, and people are like, "Can't we enjoy one fucking thing, you <laughs> bitch?" And I was like, I didn't mean for it to be gone. I was just, just trying to be funny. You're just pointing out a, a funny t- terrifying Look, thing I'm a satirist <laughs> you <laughs> are a satirist <laughs> One Whatever. of them is correct. Sounds like Kelly Dodd. Okay, Danielle, it's the holidays. I have two quick gifts for you. I can't believe I'm getting a gift. I have nothing for you. And I know. Here's the first one. Ooh. These are two very special gifts. And I'm going to pull up our other one because it's really... Oh, it was just was like on a sitcom where it's just in a box that you just lift off the top. I know. The Flight Girls, a World War II... Looks novel, like novel. This yeah, is, I I'm heard not, it's good. I'm very As we all know, Danielle's about. porn is World War Two. Yes, I will. I will jack it to World War Two any day of the week. Yeah. <gasps> Ooh, this but, this will be well read and masturbated to this weekend. <laughs> Thank that's you. That's not all. Danielle. Oh, there's more. I had a little friend say <gasps> hello to you and Merry Christmas. I'm and, so um, terrified right now. I hope you enjoy this, Daniel. Okay, who is this? Well, hello, Daniel. <gasps> oh, it's Mama. Oh my God. Casey told me that you are my biggest fan. Oh my, God. oh my goodness, I would love to meet my biggest fan. <gasps> what? I tell you, she said so many cute things about you. She was telling me something. I think this is the funniest thing I've ever heard. What? Danielle, she said that last Halloween that you dressed up like I Mama did, D. Mama now, D. that must have been pretty scary. I wasn't. Because I think Dan to dress up like Mama D, and I was dressed up like Mama D. So we had three Mama D's out there. We sure did. That is so cute. Why didn't you send me a picture, girlfriend? I'm sorry. I would have loved to have seen that picture. Anyway, she said that you think the things I say are crazy and funny. And, you know, Andy says the same thing. He always says, Mama D, I don't understand what you mean, what you say, but they're so funny. I never will forget, Danielle, the time <gasps> I told him. This is really said, going on. Doing? And I said, I'm as good as a gnat's ass wrapped around a rain barrel. <laughs> he said, what is that? I said, I don't know. He said, well, I don't know either. <laughs> I just think of, I don't know if I dream them up or what, but I just think of things to say. It goes on she for re- another wow. three minutes. Three minutes? Mama D delivered <gasps> such a beautiful cameo. I love her. I feel... I'm going to cry yeah. because I feel wrapped in her arms this holiday season and I, I, I needed her and she, I didn't know how much I needed her. I was crying. <laughs> Oh I my didn't god! Know how much I needed her! Yes, she seemed so warm and lovely. She really gave her all to that. You know, she, even though she seemed to be withholding with Deandra, she gave her her money in the end. Because as we saw tonight, I know, and I feel like I gave Deandra her money since I paid for that cameo. You did, yeah. <sighs> Wow, thank wow. you, Casey. You're so Both welcome. of these are such beautiful gifts. I have Gosh. nothing. And you have one more announcement, then we'll be Yes, I guest. do, guys. Our Chicago show um, on our tour this summer uh, sold out. So, I mean, not a thanks, Chicago, Chicago show. Yeah, thanks, Chicago. So we opened another uh, another show, guys. Yeah, so we've added a 930 show. Uh, this is Friday, August 7th. Yeah, so, and the first one sold out. The earlier one sold out. So we have the second one. Anyone in Chicago wants to come see us? Get yeah, your tickets. Worst. And uh, reminder, we're going to be in New York February 1st. There's still some tickets for our 4 o'clock. And it's then, 5 o'clock, actually. Sorry. <laughs> Jerry O'Connell is our guest. I'm so excited to talk to him. He's, and we have another special guest, a surprise oh, special guest that's yes. joining us. And um, also, you know, in July, we're going to be going to Philadelphia, D.C., Boston, of course, Chicago, and Atlanta. Join us. <laughs> Thank you. 
We're back. We sure are. We're back with an oldie but a goodie. Because my mom would say we're back with a pistol. As we got a real guest on our hands. We sure do. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this guy makes me laugh so hard. And I want to tell everyone, if you are, you know, adverse to anything unkind, turn, turn off, off the episode. <laughs> because we are going to really get down and dirty here before the new year. We're going to say some things. He, while we were watching these seven episodes we watched together this evening because there was a lot of television yeah, they threw the tonight. reunion at us they threw Dallas at us they threw Jersey at us so while we were watching them he had some of the, he was saying the funniest things just gems not even like writing them down no just I wrote them down frantically in an effort to get them to you all and look they're not kind in fact no. many of them are downright cruel but mm-hmm. They'll make you laugh They'll if you're open you to it. If you're open to it. If you're not, turn off and 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 we'll see you next year. And we'll see you next year. Please welcome the hilarious, hilarious, hilarious writer on Family Guy wrote the movie Ted and the sequel to Ted. Ted two. Ted two. Ted and Ted two. Mm-hmm. Alec Sulkin. Hi guys. Hi. Hi. Welcome back to the Nook. Thanks for being here, boy. The length of that warning you just gave everyone before <laughs> yeah, I came on. Actually... It was, and then at the end, you were like, so... Oh, yeah, and he wrote some things. Alex Sulkin! <laughs> <laughs> but please. Yeah, should we trim it? No, no, no. Don't trim it. Okay. Leave it. I, I was honored. And I'm, you know, I hope that the people you hope listening... You can be are... as mean as we said. Yeah, I hope you live I up to the I hope I can live hype. up to that. Yeah. yeah. All right. No, you're actually just so genuinely funny. <sighs> Oh, Truly, the lines are. kept coming. Oh, well, that's you know, pot meat kettle. There we go. <laughs> okay, let's not I mean, get into I'm that. I'm gonna start people off with a line right off the bat. Oh, oh there was some do it. Yeah. Let's do it. me lol. Uh, let's start with OC, which we watched the reunion. Yes, together. we watched the reunion together, and then last night separately we watched you know the Alone. one before. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna start off with one thing that you said tonight that made me laugh so hard, which was from. Dallas, you were kind of getting your eyes on Carrie, the new cast member, Mm -hmm. uh, the one Leanne has been saying these incredibly derogatory racist remarks about, but you also had a remark for... (laughs) (laughs) Now, I I had said, I think Carrie's cute, to which you responded. I think that she looks like a Toll House cookie that needs another two minutes in the oven. (laughs) It's a thing that I've seen. It's not uh, specific to any gender or race of any kind. I've seen this face in many people. Before. In many forms. Absolutely. Many forms. On no. a doll once. <laughs> there are just certain people that they just look a little puffy. And they're not the ready. They're not, not ready. ready. You want them to be ready. They're not ready to be consumed. You turn the light in the oven on like, I'm about to, oh no, they're still really right. white and Still puffy. you put a toothpick in, not ready. Not ready. Not ready. It comes yeah. out raw. That, yeah. It's like raw dough. Under that's here. right. So that was, but I, but that's being said, I do, uh, I think of all the women on Dallas, I, in my short exposure to her, I enjoyed her the most. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She doesn't mince words. Oh God, that made me laugh so hard. Okay. It's <laughs> <laughs> so amazing. Okay. We're actually going to start with OC because we just we, watched the reunion together. Wow. Now we haven't had a great season in OC except for last night's episode. I will see, say oh, before the God. reunion when to see Tamara in a, in a tiny bush, <laughs> standing <laughs> in standing a bush, standing in a bush, in a like bad Easter dress, Crying well, into a bush hidden. Gina could not find her. When Gina walked <laughs> was by. Was that a Gina impersonation? Yeah. That was very good. When Gina walked by and couldn't find her and then did that double take, it wasn't as funny as when Luann fell in the bush. No, but nothing it was will ever be. Good. That was good. But no, it was- yeah, it was. I mean, the whole event was terrible. And it was like Tamara at a certain point made a decision to freak out on everyone. Yes. yes. And, and. I, and everybody was saying, oh, the tequila, and she drank too much. I'm sure she had a little to drink, and that kind of activated this need in her to say, like, I'm just going to get mad at everyone, no matter what they say to me. You don't <laughs> understand. And you don't understand. At some point, her and Shannon saying to Gina, you don't know. You don't know. <laughs> oh, that was you the- don't <laughs> and she right. clearly laughing. like not coming back at them at all, just like bewildered, mm-hmm. as bewildered as we are by this new hair she was wearing. Oh, God. well, she kind of ruined it for us because she owned it in the episode. She was like, "I've had 
bad hair choices this season. That's an understatement. You're right. She's and that's, I guess, what I herself. love about the women is that they never own anything, so they let us go there first. Yes. I know. That I know. sucks that she did that. They say they own a lot of things. Yeah. They don't own I, I own, I'm the first one to own it. <laughs> when have I not owned it? <laughs> they don't own a thing, including their houses. Uh, apparently. <laughs> renter. <laughs> Kelly Dodd, the that renter. That is the worst thing. Vicky you- screamed, get your name and let me a renter. Oh. They, the way that they use renting as a slam. Pro- Weaponized. As, like I'm like I've rented most of my life and I've never thought of it as a bad thing. It yeah. is shocking. Yeah, well, it it is a bad thing. Is it? But you know, in this economy, I'm, I'm not saying Vicky was wrong in her dig. You know, a renter, it's a little day class. <laughs> Oopsie. <laughs> no, but it, oh it, it took me instantly back to and, and I'll show my age. A movie when I was a kid called Summer Rental with John Candy, which is basically like. It's a it's a referendum on whether you like John Candy or not. They force you to say you don't like John Candy by watching the movie, which is terrible, but you like John Candy. But the whole plot is he goes to a place for the summer to rent a house, and he's looked down on by the uh, yachtsmen uh, all summer. And they get in a big sailing race at the end of the summer. A regatta? Regatta. Mm-hmm. They're neck and neck at the end. Suddenly, John Candy's boat's pulling ahead. Why? His pants are on the sail. Oh, John Candy's God. a larger guy. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> nothing to do with his weight. Mm-hmm. As you were saying, John Candy, for some reason I was picturing Vicky Gumbelson. <laughs> Why? Why? I don't you know what you're side, but do they appear no. similar looking? At what oh, stage of yeah, Vicky Gumbelson are we Something. talking? I just saw a flash. Yeah. They both <gasps> nothing to do with weight. At a certain point they both looked like they were sniffing for something. Right? I mean, like they were just trying to root something out. I'm not saying anything bad. But right, just... I guess it's more of like an essence. It's an yeah. essence. Yeah. But don't do that to John Candy, by the way, because John Candy, I oh, thought I think, you were oh, going to say Vicky. No, don't do that to John Candy. I love John Candy. Over some relatives, I might bring him back to life. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, oh, 100%. Of course. Yeah. He's the best. Yeah. The love funniest. Him. He's the best we had. And, and do we feel that way about Vicky? No. Is Vicky warm hearts like that? <laughs> Imagine She's playing trains and automobiles in the, with Vicky and her him. show. I thought, okay, so yes, I agree with you about Tamara just going after everyone. I also felt like Vicky wasn't grateful enough for that party. That party must have cost so much money. It was terrible, though. There were oh. seven people line dancing. Like all I these... felt like the treats and stuff seemed pretty cute. <laughs> no? I think it was a cute party, but again, underpopulated. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All these woefully. parties are so woefully and it was just, underpopulated. At the end, it was just Steve with his you know, Ronald Reagan haircut at the bar all by himself. And then also <laughs> Dr. Deb just at a bar being like, where's my silver thermos with a pink straw? Oh, that's right. It's very special to me. <laughs> okay, but speaking of, it worst. came out. Well, we'll get okay. Speaking of Dr. Deb, it came out that she has been stealing and got arrested for stealing in Mexico. In I believe. Mexico. Oh. I mean, this all tracks. Is she stealing fanciful yarn for her hair? <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know what the fuck she's doing, but you texted it to me and you're like, not surprised by this. It's as though we always knew. It, it. We knew this about her. Nothing is shocking. Oh, she, yeah. She's a fucking monster. She's a monster. She's a monster. I feel bad for Bronwyn. I do. I do. I feel bad for her. Because Bronwyn said it there. It's like, I can talk to my mother. Only on her terms. Like, so I can never talk about anything I want to talk about. She's never going to deal with the past. It's truly like a Halloween costume because that's just like a rich bitch, Deb, who has just thrown all this shit on herself to make herself seem interesting and like yes. liberal. But really, it's like, oh, I, we know that woman. We've met her a million times. Oh, yeah. And she's so basic that she has to like throw all this shit on herself. To be looked at constantly. I love when she was like, people say it's fucked up to send your kids to boarding school. But like, yeah, I had to go off and get a degree for four years of your life. And she's also, if you take care of your kids, you know what that's called? Helicopter parent. It's like. No. Well, let, there's, you don't there's an to, in between. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, there's an in between. Yeah. You can send your kid to a boarding school or not, but because you don't does not mean you're a helicopter. But what parent. is her background that she was financially able to send her kid to a prep school? Like, I, th- I just picture her as a sort of commune like person. Well, but. she was in a band, but we can find no trace of them on the on the internet. Oh, and now she's a doctor. Of course, right. You know, well, Doctor Dad yeah. is yeah. implicit, but medicine woman. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it says she was I know, a chain. I know. It says that. I don't know what the hell she is. Maybe yeah. before she had that um, yogi business, where she just had a, a band of people playing music as right. she did yoga. My theory now, just talking about it, is that she has a rich dad that she doesn't want to talk about or think about, who probably paid for. I it. agree. Dr. D's dad. Dr. Yeah. Dad's. Okay. So yeah. Rich Bronwyn's grandfather. Grandfather. 
Yeah. Of, yeah. That, yeah. That tracks. Now, Bronwyn is, you think that her husband is mm -hmm. a cult leader, you said? No, I, I believe I said... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. You said something a bit different. Yeah, I think I s referred to him as a psycho by orgy bottom. So, <laughs> and by so that, many words together. And I think, But I think if you break it down, it makes sense. <laughs> it makes perfect sense. Yeah, I, okay. I just picture... Well, there was one shot of them in the last episode where... Because I've been trying for all season to figure out their dynamic. Okay. And because he just stares with those wide eyes... And it feels like they're communicating for the first time about a lot of stuff, yes. which is mm -hmm. weird. But there was something the other day where they, they left a room sort of at the same time. And Bronwyn went first, and he went sort of weirdly meekly behind. And I suddenly got a flash of their whole dynamic. Like, it's possible that she's like a dominatrix and dominates him and many other men and women at the same time. Well, I think there's a group Seeing involved. her birthday shot, that makes clear there is a shot of her from her birthday like in sort of a yeah uh, i mean i can't leather yeah yes. like just like leather. pasties and yeah. like it was red lighting so i couldn't make I heads or tails right, yeah, but there like, was there's something something, there's something there. there there's some again no judgment just right just putting it out there that yes. that's what i saw there's something there. There's something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're right. And, and no judgment at all. I just think that it's very weird and bad. <laughs> <laughs> no judgment at all. <laughs> okay, now Kelly Dodd, you were making me laugh because we, when we first started, Kelly was kind of in her like lighter place. Yes. You know, mm. just like they first sat down on the couch. It all looked so insane. Yeah. And Kelly's just kind of like laughing a little. And you were, what did you, you were like activate the asset? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I feel like she needs to like in a Jason Bourne style get like a weird text to suddenly you know scooter bike off to rome to kill somebody but she and she was of course by the end of the episode she had been activated yeah. <laughs> and she, was, she seemed pretty fully activated yeah, by the end she yes. had been, although she had a little more to go i feel like maybe well oh, the, the next episode comes there. the crying as yeah. we saw in the preview which like, is genius i know and they like all Jason use this Bourne, the problem with an asset like her and jason Bourne is sometimes they go off the grid yeah and they come back for everybody Everybody. Yeah, <laughs> nobody's safe. Nobody's safe. Yeah. <laughs> she was yelling some things when she said that Shannon and um, Tamara were burnt. Cooked. Oh, cooked. Cooked. Yeah. <laughs> she was so funny. To, usually, yeah. her, her sense of humor is so cheesy, but she was zinging and yeah. zanging left and zinging right. And zanging yeah, tonight. this was a boxing match. She definitely took the early rounds. Like she looked comfortable out there. She was on her toes. She looked and she great. Was, she was enjoying it when the chaos started and Shannon lost her cool. Kelly. Was the biggest it. smile of the season. Uh, now, someone else did not keep their cool, and that was our beloved Vicky G backstage. No. No. Now, that was a, a blast to watch. It was so thrilling to see her and Steve Lodge outside her bitching to, like, a 19-year-old PA being like, I'm not going to fucking go out there and not sit and sit on the end like some kind of has-been. Yeah, she's like, I feel like I, uh, trash. Yesterday's garbage. Like, just... And Steve's like, then, then let's go home. And <laughs> she was pause. like, long, long pause. Long pause. Like, that yeah. is not an option, Steve no, Lodge. No, uh, To just simply not go on camera is never an option. But you option. know what? She's right. That's insane that they wanted that, but you said, Alex, that you think they set it up for that to happen? Of course. Really? Well, I, I, they, know so they, they know what triggers her. They know what triggers her. I mean, so clearly at, at some point, Andy... Uh, made the decision that Vicky is no longer officially a housewife. She's, a friend she's not. She's not in the picture. She's not in the I'd intro. I'd like to know what minute, what day, what I know. second that was. It, one day they'll. What be were a, we doing? There'll, there'll when be that movies happened. made about that one day. You know, <laughs> just like you know, it's Richard like, Jewell. It's yeah. like sort of Bay of Pigs <laughs> right. type of. We'll be hearing yeah. it from a hundred different sources what happened, but, but I I think that. Um, they knew what was going to happen when they put her back there and made her wait. And they got all the clips they wanted. Her saying stuff like, I started this show. And yes. it was so sad. It's like... And they know, you know, because Vicky is all about whatever happened to her in middle and high school. Mm -hmm. So... So we, and we've seen it on the show before, which is like she wasn't the quote unquote cool girl. She was left out. She was probably made fun of. And so she has been on the show. The whole thing is like, we're the cool girls. Everybody wants to be us. Like that yeah. is kind of her status. And when she doesn't feel like she's in the in circle, yeah. she gets very triggered. And so having her not be a quote unquote cool girl as part of the cast, it triggers her and being left outside. Like yeah, so that's why all that mm. I'm a has been. I won't sit on the end. This, this is yeah. my show. Yeah. This is my show and I did of like course. when Bronwyn the first thing she'd said in uh, two hours was right. like it's not your show Vicky well because 
Bronwyn has a, an incredibly vested interest in Vicky staying on the outside, which yes. is like Bronwyn would be first eaten in a cannibal incident. You don't there. think it's Emily? Oh. I think the Emily and Shane well, the, thing. I shouldn't have brought up the eating thing. But... Oh. oh, yes. Oh, yeah. We're and going to the baby. And this Bitch Sash is brought to you by Diet, Diet Sun Sunkiss Orange. Orange. <laughs> <laughs> the strangest drink to always have in your fridge that yeah. I have. I never, I never drink it anywhere this else with cancerous here. cancerous drink. <laughs> now, can we... Oh, there we go. There's the ad. The tag line. <laughs> cancer in a can. Yes, I can, sir. With Sunkiss Diet. <laughs> I'm assuming there are men who work on Die. the Die. Speak Die. it. <laughs> Speaking of cancer, I really enjoyed getting that Brook, Brooks package today. Oh, I loved it. Oh. I, mean, I, I miss, miss Brooks I so miss much. Brooks. Seeing him hunker down in the bunker with Andy and uh, on Watch What Happens Live for that one on one. Brooks Those will were the days. Uh, live on in our lymph nodes forever. <laughs> <laughs> or wherever the hell his fake cancer was. I think it had spread everywhere. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was unclear. It was in various parts at right, yeah, various times. It moved around. Time. Yeah. Moved around. Like, like, yeah, it, it was a lazy uh, Susan of cancer. It was just like hitting them all, but like moving. Through that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> if only cancer were as considerate as a lazy <laughs> Susan, lazy I think your life would be a lot better. Oh, a lot of our lives. A lot of our, <laughs> lot of our loved ones. Loves a lot Again, this segment brought to you by Diet <laughs> Sunkiss. Diet Sunkiss. Oh, oh, man. Tamara just... I got nothing really to say there. I, and, I mean... I wanted to also say something about... Um, Emily's father-in-law again has because we know he went to the the strip show oh, and yeah, watched Emily yeah. strip and then when Shane wouldn't dance at the party with her he was like I'll dance with you oh my <laughs> like, god their closeness because of Shane's unwillingness to to I guess fuck his wife or whatever it is to be a human being has right. really put his father in many uncomfortable positions yes oh my god yes and you know I they don't show enough of Shane's personality. You get the, you definitely get the sense that I he's feel like we're getting. No, no, like no, you, you get the, you get the sense that he's he's a jerk and he's not nice to Emily. In uh, certainly in the situation, and he can't pass the bar. Not, he cannot not three pass times the bar for his life. He can't. Fucking life. He really can. He just can't. I do get the sense that. <clears throat> Because people sometimes on the show this year would come back and report things that Shane had said. Oh, Shane said that blah, blah, blah. And there are always these little one-liners. So well, I kinda... we got a one-liner, which was like uh, Emily in the preview was like, Shane? <laughs> in the preview, Emily was like, Shane said that uh, Bronwyn's husband's sent statement necklace. What did he say? Oh, should get a ticket for BravoCon. Does it need like, a ticket okay. for BravoCon? All right. It's, uh... Something. Something. <laughs> you know, Something. Look, we're looking for any. But like, I did feel sun. badly when Emily was told she needed hip surgery. Which, by the way, thanks for showing us that scar. I fucking Ooh. threw up when it I was, saw it that. It was bad that timing was, for, when for he, a point you were making. When he gave her no comfort, and <laughs> he all, just said, "I think Emily's the most beautiful <laughs> yes. housewife." Yeah. I do. And then they, and then they showed, showed her, her scar. scar. Oh. I was glad that Tony, who was doing my nails at the time, didn't see it. Oh, yeah. Casey was getting her nails done as we <laughs> acrylics filled. Acrylics yes. filled as we were watching. It was quite. <laughs> experience for say, all of us when, <laughs> <laughs> i forgot about the smell guys, i like again, the smell guys, I like the sp- oh there was, so i was saying in the doctor's office when emily calls shane to be like i have to oh, um get a surgery scene. and he goes well great you scene. let it go this long it's your like basically it's your fault right. and then she cries and her it gets nothing except for from like her six-year-old daughter who then is crying that it was, was heartbreaking. heartbreaking that was a <clears> really was tough a, scene not a good moment for for shane why does it I'm sure it did encourage Emily to go to the doctor many times. Yeah. I'm sure oh, he yeah. didn't, mm-hmm. Alec. He's such lovingly, a piece lovingly. of shit. You know, Shane deshelled turtle. That's what he is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what he looks like. <laughs> right? He does. He does. <laughs> oh, God, he does. Oh, he and really Gina. Gina's Gina, look Gina. continues to stymie me. She's, I just can't make heads or tails of it. No. But you'd have to say it's not trending in the right direction. No. <laughs> <laughs> if you were if you're looking at a flow chart, it's not heading but the way it you doesn't would want. See, but it's it's going any <laughs> but it goes any which way but up. Yes. Like you know what I mean? Like it's, <laughs> yeah, it's not going even like the normal no, way of down. No, it's, it's like it's just like it's Scatter shot. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I can't. Lateral bad moves. It's like yeah. if you're trying to figure out, like, a homicide, like, just and they put those little pins on the yeah. big map. You, you or, wouldn't be able to do it. You can't really. solve the murder of Gina's 
looks because it's oh god they they smushed a big pie in our face though at the end of the the thing when they were recapping what was going on with everyone and and the whole episode had been like i trust matt he's in a great place really he's you know unbelievable and then at the end it's like matt beat her up (laughs) <laughs> or something, yeah. you know, not to make a joke about that, but it was like a surprise. It was a in that tough moment. Chiron that they threw on yeah, her. But they don't, they usually throw some little joke like, you know, she's still looking to whoop it up. And yeah, then, you yeah. know, but this yeah. was like a very just serious darkness. thing. It was just very dark. I was it's unprepared. Not- I was underprepared. Also- yes, because he was arrested for some, like breaking into her house, I think. We're going to hear more about that yeah, coming it's up. It's hard mm. to put it in a Chiron. Yes. That type it's of Very hard. That's there right. was another Chiron that hit that we all, all was not as sad as that with uh-huh. Gina, but was also pretty devastating, which was when it said that Brandy was thinking about joining an adult cheer squad <laughs> <laughs> from Dallas. Guys, yeah, I'm going to say something. I'm going to say something yeah. and I you need you to, it. and I mean this with all seriousness. I would join an adult cheer squad in two seconds. But that's because you're still trying to make up for what happened. Yes. What? You didn't make the cheerleader team? No. We've heard about this many no, times no, on Bitch Stuff. Uh, we've said, I Briefly. I went to nationals and <laughs> fell at nationals on, Cause you didn't, on live TV. Really? Because you didn't. Because I didn't. Lock your. I didn't lock my knee. I didn't keep my legs straight in the stunt. Were you hurt or just embarrassed? Embarrassed. Okay. Ego is hurt. Parents there? No, they didn't fly for that. <laughs> okay, all right, that's better. <laughs> so we're going to fly to Dallas, Texas for that. But all her peers were pretty All my yeah. peers. But anyway, everyone's heard the story. But it, it holds. I would join in a second. I'm not even saying this joke. I would. <laughs> God, <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> guys, the last instead, time I was before here. he sat down, he was very Robert Durstian when he was here last time, I bird was. being all over the place, and here you are again. <laughs> well, it's, the again, the diet's unkissed. Cancer. It wants it out of your body. It does. It it was like, please, no, I reject this. <laughs> Anything else about OC? I mean, we'll see next week. I, I will say it jumped. It jumped a level. I what? Wait, what was that thing with Vicky filing a lawsuit as oh. Jane Roe? And then she was like, yeah, of course it was me. Of course it was me. She filed it against Bravo because Kelly had made comments about her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Andy seemed so pissed. Oh, I knew Andy was like, let's fucking nail her with that right oh, off the yeah. bat. Because she did not think Andy was going to bring that up. And right when she sat down, she said to Andy, she said, don't you ever, I am at 125 right now. I, I am know. hotter than hot yes. my temperature. To see her scream at Andy. Oof. But by the way, to see her do that to Andy and then Andy's first thing back was like, hmm, well, so us- you're a moron who filed this fake lawsuit under a weird name. Want to talk about that? Good it for Andy. so good. Good for Andy. Good for Andy. And it was also an amazing moment because she was like, I'm at 150% when she was saying all that. And then all of a sudden they're like, and we're back with Vicky. And she put on the fakest smile yes. as if we had not got, as if she'd never seen this show as before. As if she thought they were going to include her parking lot tirade. Uh, I know. Of course they I really that. like that they had a big gong up on the side a la Shannon and Marifal. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appre- set decor. Mwah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mwah, mwah. That was the tip of the cap to the go- the old gong show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chuck Ferris. Oh, okay. Well, should we take a little break? Anything else on OC, Alec? What else, what, else, what else did we learn on OC this season? Boy, it was such a good one. So Gina's in trouble. I mean, that's, that's not funny. Her hair was funny. The ending was not funny. Yep. Tamara had a down season, did not like her. She I was, don't think we need Tamara. She was, I'm okay with her. She was causing gone. trouble. And boy, Eddie, the, the, the mystery of Eddie, I'm beginning, I'm becoming too bored to try to solve. <laughs> I think that, you know, every time I see him being fake with Vicky, it makes me think that what Vicky said about him was probably true. Wow. Right. Because he's so friendly to her. Well, just like I couldn't imagine being in that position and then being forced to socialize with that person. I guess you would come to some kind of thing where you'd be okay with it. Well, don't forget when Vicky went to Eddie and Tamara's house holding the Bible to try to kind of apologize and get through to them with their newfound Christianity. But I also think Eddie is just one of those people. And I like Eddie. I do. I don't think he's interesting for television, but I think he's just like, fine. I mean, you call me gay. I'm not find insulted it by that. How many? Not not because of Vicky's rumor. More just about their relationship. How much they're always like kissing and nuzzling. But because I think he's My just like I don't over even it. Look at each other when we go out. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I yeah, think right. that's that normal. He is. 
That's I a think normal that sex life. Hundred <laughs> percent. It's God intended. I think that he's just like I don't care. Like I think he's just like I'm not getting involved in your drama. I think he is chill. I do. I think he's just like you. You have a generous an, assessment. I, mean, it is, I do. Th- it is a generous assessment because I just don't think he gives a fuck. I think he's like, say That's what nice. you want about me. I don't. I don't consider it an insult. Like it's not true about me, but I don't give a fuck, and I'm not getting it. I'm not getting into this with you, crazy bitches. Mm-hmm. I have cut fitness to run. Yeah, that was really tough when Kelly was like, sell another group on Tamara for oh, cut fitness. You fucking for, failed. You're gym. failing, Jim. That was a. Oh. She got her good. The best yeah. was when Kelly's like, where in Walmart? Where in Walmart? I truly don't even know the product. Does anyone know the product? It's water. It's a water. Is it a water? The product is water? <laughs> I believe it's like some sort of water. What a water. great idea. <laughs> really? <laughs> Kelly is a businesswoman. For sale? And then Tamara yells, it's in the $1 section at Target. And, and then she, Kelly tried to ro- like say something really She's like, trying, trying to, to roll it, it out. Yeah, I'm trying to roll it, it out. <laughs> So you do what you're rolling out. I didn't out. understand what any of them were saying, but I was there for it. I was. I so do happy. love well, how intensely passionate and angry Vicky gets about her insurance customers. Oh, <laughs> and Kelly nailed her. She's like, "You're a middleman." Oh, it was great. Oof. It was great. Oof. But also, Vicky gets very annoyed at the idea of anyone else trying to call themselves a business person oh, in yes. her presence. You know, it's sort of like it's like, come on. Come but on. When I look around, it's like come she's on. got a point. Yeah, yeah she's got a point. Wines by wives. Wines by wives. <laughs> RIP that business. We'll take a break. And we're back. Should we do some Dallas? Let's do it. We're fresh off Dallas tonight. Now the, Dallas, the we got season to, finale. We got to see the rise of Cameron. Oh, Cameron rose up tonight. The Westcott name is back. <laughs> And it's never been more important than it is right now. It really She's felt, not she, just some Highland Park blonde. No, <laughs> she did the Westcott name proud. She did. And uh, as we discussed, she looked sort of like someone between worlds from Coco. Because she was <laughs> very skeletal, but still had some stuff hanging on. Some skin. She looked yeah. like a skeleton in a science teacher's <laughs> office. Oh, yeah. yeah. Biology class guy. Oh, um, God. I mean, I love Cameron. Me too. She does appear like 70 to me just in her essence, not even in her. Like, she just seems well, like such an old. she's slow moving. Yes. I love Cameron, but when she sat court down, who was in a, a full blazer and like to tell him about Leanne's racist comments, do you think that was the first time she had told him? No, mm. not at all. Really? Kind of seemed like, I don't know if court's capable of it that. It seemed acting. like the first time court was in session. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, where, wherever, wherever Cameron goes out with her husband, she's got a courtside seat. It's pretty, <laughs> <What>? pretty sweet. <laughs> <laughs> That's the last one. I didn't know I'd like more. at least I'd like I certainly more. hope so. <laughs> I'd like more. Now we saw some really tough looks tonight as well. Mm. Just looks all over the place. We oh, had Stephanie. the one. Sh- we had Stephanie's blue, as you called it. I think Nancy Reagan. Nancy Reagan chic. Nancy Reagan yeah. chic. That was that a blue- misstep. Big misstep. Big just misstep. like the shoulder pads, pointy shoulder pads with a short, poofy dress. But then the back was a bit longer. Yeah, it was, and the waist was up too high. Yeah, it was something And the weird. hair was pinned up. Oh, like it was a, bad. There were so many looks going on. I and it was looked like a Tiffany's box, the yes. color. Yes. Tiffany's then there box. Intent, David. <laughs> <laughs> then there was Cameron's one shouldered, uh, like, plaid. <clears throat> yeah, it was like a pink. long sleeve on one side and then a tank. On the other mm-hmm. sleeve, and it was not a great look. No, but none of them sitting across from her was just Carrie in a baseball cap and zero makeup and a bomber. And and you said Leanne looks like a former Bond girl, right? Which like I an think 80s is she Bond. Does pretty nice. Look like an eighties Bond girl. I believe we talked about this last time. And I, I no one I, remembers I, one thing. I, I know, <laughs> I know, it's true. The people like continuity. Yeah. yeah. Um, there was a specific Bond girl who she looked like. It was the woman who plays Octopussy, and her name is Maud Adams. Oh, and she wow. was actually in two Bond movies. But that's Leanne clearly saw Maud Maud Adams at a young age and said, "I'm just going for that." That's it. That's that it for and, and stuck saying in her head. racist things to our friends. From the south. Mexico. To our little toll house cookie. No, how dare you call them that? <laughs> <laughs> you can't say that. Guys, <laughs> Guys, when Cameron told 
Carrie in the van and then Court was just like uncomfortably looking out the window and then he was like there's more Cameron and Cameron's like okay okay she also called you a chirpy little Mexican yeah. and then when I didn't like seeing Cameron relay that when she said in what did what did Leanne say? She well, said that she looked like a chirpy little Mexican, and also she did this whole thing of like, yeah, like uh, strong and like like when yeah, she's she like, doesn't Come have on, any you think you're so strong. Yeah, and, and then she like jerked. You know, she did this sort of like the jerk off motion as she was saying yes, it. Like, and then she did. It. She basically did another tirade to Stephanie. Yes, similarly, she did it many times, many times. It wasn't just oh, once I believe or she might not remember the word chir- chirpy because you know when Leanne goes and like is talking. I don't mean she she meant it one hundred percent. I just mean like her memory because she goes into that like psycho mode psycho mode yeah but it's you can in see her the switch it's oh 100 yeah. this yeah. is not me saying like no. this isn't leanne no i'm yeah. saying she knew she had said chirpy you think oh she's yeah. like that's not a she's word like, because that's an excuse like that's like parsing words when you know you've done and something she guilty first, she didn't know how deep she was in when cameron confronted her she's like yeah yeah i said i said i said she was mexican yeah yeah but yeah, we she actually is. kind of suspected watching it that perhaps she knew she was stepping into something because Cameron and Carrie arrived together. Yeah. Which was bad news. And so yeah. Leanne was right away like, oh my goodness, look at these couches. Let's go sit over here. Let's sit for a while. Let's just sit <laughs> down there. Let's have a <laughs> sit. Let's, Let's have a sit. sit. <laughs> but yeah. Um, well, we got to talk about Deandra and Mama D again. <sighs> How many conversations like that do we have to sit through? I'm I, fine I to sit them. through more, oh, personally, I, of of um, the glass menagerie of oh, Amanda God. and her the daughter. Plexiglass menagerie. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Well, That's really Carrie good. and her husband and Mama D and Deandra, we had back-to-back scenes of the exact same scene, which was like one person basically begging the other person for money yes. right. that they are close to and that should have a kind of – better relationship than they have yeah. and, and the person with money hates the other person right yes. and, both and holds the, it and, yeah. and holds them captive by that money and enjoys yes. holding them captive yes. oh well i mean what's the point of having money if you can't hold them a little captive it's true of course just it's slightly true. captive just you have to be a, a good king yes <laughs> right? yes benevolent but real quick back to leanne though like i think when it started to fall when she, and so she that's when she started to like make it about the wording mm-hmm. and like that's so that's when she was like i would never use the word chirpy like that like oh, that to her, like the semantics and like oh, what you see something wrong with the word mexican it's like you know perfectly well we don't think that there's anything wrong with the word mexican yep. yeah it's the way and the tone it's like way she's, and the she tone. says mexican she, and it's yeah. like so it's when she started to like grab uh, frantically that you because I've that actually she never knew. seen that quite reaction from Leah. Exactly. Normally she goes crazy or she's this was like because when she yeah. walked away she goes <laughs> unaffected. Yeah, oh, that was the scariest thing that Chilling. happened. Yeah. And she was like, hold, I can't even. I wish you could see like holding her finger up, just like snapping to herself, and oh. that's really psychotic. She was that's snapping. When clearly, she was you're snapping. most affected. Yeah. I feel like that was yeah. something she learned in therapy. Like snap, like you know how you have like those things mm-hmm. of like yeah. there's certain sounds or like she's calm a yourself. like that symbol that movie like yes. she's got some fucking weird well wasn't stuff she raised on. by carnies or something yeah. she was Sibyl? like abandoned no oh, Leanne. Yes. Yes. yes that is yes. for sure and she makes us well aware of those facts yeah it and was I just, feel like her husband doesn't have any perspective on the situation. How yeah. dare you? <laughs> it's got a, it's got yeah. a patch over oh, yeah. Okay. I this love it so one. much. And I love when Housewives, my favorite thing is when another one gets in trouble. It has nothing to do with, but if someone doesn't like them, the oh. way they just jump on oh, it. Deandra, Deandra was all over that oh, tonight. Oh, Deandra. It was great. It was, uh, yeah. I mean, I think Leanne tr- understood even within this that this was not a time for her to go full flip the switch crazy on everyone because I think that she knew inside that she was wrong. Yeah. And, but she, and that's, that's why she went was, over and apologized. But she, she, but couldn't, she thought she could sucked. squash it, though. Her apology She sucked. thought, if I go over and I really kind of try to put on this whole thing, I can end this. But it was just such a fake apology. She went over, it would be like me going, um, Casey, okay? Uh, if you're upset, I'm I, I'm sorry. Okay. If you don't like that, I said the word Mexican. It's like yeah. what? No, 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 no. no. That's not how you apologize. It was really bad, guys. It was very. And bad. And then to hear that Cameron and her are still struggling through their friendship. Mm. See, that was the last straw. Because I bet Cameron now, especially since she's seen it all, they're they're never going to be friends again. But the fact that Cameron's 
not going to be friends with someone that acts like that way. She does care about her reputation too much. It'll be a good reunion. I like when Cameron's like, girl, wake up. Think about your own reputation. Oh, and she was flexing a little in this episode. She's like, I'm not afraid of you. If anything, you should be afraid of me. Yes. And she said that to everyone. And then she's like, and anyone who comes at me. It was like, uh, I don't know. I'm thinking of Lucy uh, Lou and... and uh, kill Bill. <laughs> oh, <laughs> she yeah. gets up yeah, on the yeah, table. Yeah. If any of you fuckers have anything to say, <sighs> I often think of else? Lucy Lou and Kill Bill. Who doesn't? Yeah. Yeah. Who doesn't? Like in my own defense. Anything else on Dallas? I mean, I'm ex- so excited for the reunion. Excited for the mm. reunion. Oh, oh, we didn't talk about the main thing. <gasps> the main thing. Leanne's excuse when she <gasps> said, I've slept with tons of oh, Mexicans. I right. found Julio Iglesias' lap. <laughs> that was unbelievable. How could we have blocked that out? We were screaming well, and we paused it. I know, but you know, remember what we said hmm. in that moment? Because we paused it, I think, thinking like, oh my goodness, what do we have to say about this? There there's nothing you just have to You're repeat right. it yeah there's no it was i slept i've slept with so many mexicans and i sat like I pointing sat, in somebody's face like, i sat on julio iglesias's lap how can i be racist oh, You're right. there's nothing to say so but just to say it just, just, repeat it. just offer there's it no, up it's just as you it. said it's a hat on a hat to sing anything more than just stating right exactly offer it up said. to take or leave mm-hmm. for anyone who wants it anyone it was wow Shall we take a break and we'll come back with our other two cities? Yes. Okay, we're back. We're going to talk briefly about New Jersey. Now, to be honest, we did not get to watch tonight's episode of New Jersey. No, we didn't. Because there were seven shows on this evening. Yes. And- Look, Juicy Joe has broken up with, uh, they've separated. And mm-hmm. he tweeted today and he said something. He just said, it's time to let go. Yeah. No, oh, but that was it an ill tweet though. It was from Italy, right? <laughs> is that what it's called That's there? That's right. That's what it is. Yeah. It's kind of, time to let it go. It's no longer tweet in America. He tweeted that with, with some Italian girl riding on top of his dick. I am telling you. He did not waste <laughs> Oh, yeah. Waste he's having a, a grand old time. Oh, yeah. He's doing just she fine. She was bouncing mm. up and down with each tweet. <laughs> yeah. I think they were both very happy, probably, inwardly, yeah. with the result. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Like the, it was time. It was time. We did catch time. as we were like fast forwarding through something, the commercials, we saw a clip of Margaret on Watch What Happens Live in a very strange three, it, Trace Amigos of um, Brandy, Vicky, and Margaret. Well, that's a weird pair. Yeah, it's the slot of machine, them. you know, and the, it's the pickle, <laughs> the cherry, and the wolf. You know, like you don't know what they have to do with each other. <laughs> but you just know you didn't win. <laughs> you just know you got to put it in the corner. You just know that like, I don't know what this you're a little is. bit hungover yeah. and a little bit nauseous and you smell like smoke. Yep. <laughs> that's kind of what Watch What Happens Live is, which is kind of what I like about it. It's just kind of like, look, those two are together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How's this all going to play out? And, and when you were on, you ended up kissing Ramona's butt, you were saying, Yes, I had to. I can't you believe to. you. And you, you have to. That's why when they were to. like, when Megan McCain, Kelly Dodd was like, Megan McCain agreed with me. <laughs> That's not anybody's And then someone was like, Megan McCain had to. She was up against you. <laughs> Margaret's face. We, I did not know who it was. I truly didn't. I love Margaret. Yeah, I, I know. did not know who it was. She's done some stuff. She's I done think, more than stuff. I think Marty Cafferty's comments last season got to her. She finally yeah. looks like she was like, I'm going to throw my hat in this ring. Yeah. Huh. I'm going to step it up from the stylist standpoint, the hair standpoint. Like, I'm going to go for it. I like the, your assessment of that, that you're kind of like proud of her. Like, it's not too late. Marcus. You can do it. <laughs> I think that's kind of what you said. It's a little late. bit. Like, she was to like, she'd already given up in a way mm-hmm. that I really loved. But now she was like, wait a minute. Now she said, smash my face into a barn owl. <laughs> 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 she looked very weird. These weird <laughs> eye cheekbone things. <laughs> <laughs> she, check her out. She looks very weird. Oh my god! <laughs> she looks nocturnal Look, of and weird. Of course, you know here we we don't want to only speak of women's looks, but look, I will these that- monsters have put themselves out there. As of- Look, have I done stuff? Look, I look insane right now. So I, I was actually going to say about I'm, Margaret. You, you guys look fantastic compared no, but to... but here's why I always identify with I mean, Margaret. compared to anyone, but especially them. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. I identify with Margaret 
because I'm like, oh, Margaret's like, yeah, I'm a housewife, but I don't have to like do all that. And I kind of feel like I'm like, I'm an actress, but I'm not going to like do all that. But then I also like, maybe I should. Yeah. <laughs> I can just summon the strength. I got a Peloton. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. What was the big kerfuffle about Peloton? I was oh, hearing last week. It was a commercial oh. and everyone thought it would seem sexist. I hadn't seen it, of course, till after I'd, mine had been delivered, but. Much I like maybe it's cold outside. You know, <laughs> what was it? Like what a guy. It was like she was so happy that she, her husband had gotten her a Peloton. I believe this is the story mm. of the yeah. commercial. Oh, that she could shape up for of, him. That she sh- and like it was a year, and she kept like kind of a video journal, and then like the end, she's like crying, like look at how great a shape, and you with your gift to me. Got me in this great ship. Is that the couple? I think so. I, I don't know. Yeah. I had a friend who wrote for uh, Last Call with Carson Daly. That was his first job. And I was like, how are you enjoying it? He's like, it's great. I get to tell my parents I write for Carson. My friends, I work for The Daily Show. It's perfect. <laughs> it's <laughs> perfect. <laughs> um, oh. We forgot to talk briefly about least favorite housewife, all the franchises right now, Jennifer can't stand her. Jennifer in Jersey really can't stand her. And you guys said what? That she her imitations were flawless and beautiful and she funny. should be on SNL. What? <laughs> what? I thought funny. they were perfect They imitations. were very bad. Really? Come on. Disagree. And it was so funny because I was ex- actually excited. But as June Diane said, she was doing her best. You're comparing her against all the comedians well, at this guess table. What? So am not, I. I know. So am I. No, I'm not comparing her to wow. Daryl Hammond in terms I of am. like her. Why? I am. <laughs> and I think she measures up. Oh, please stop. <laughs> She was pretty good. Face off. She was pretty good. <laughs> she she was. was not. But I agree. Every other thing since that, like, 40 seconds when she was standing there, I have found her to be the most annoying person. She's very annoying. A very bad person, I would say. Yeah, I'd go so far as to say she's just a bad person. Yeah, no, duh. Yeah, she stirs, but worse. I love that's where you're like, I would go so far as to say. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I don't you, care for her. You called Carrie an <laughs> unfinished whole house cookie. <laughs> you called you Margaret a Jennifer, bar face smash a like a bar. <laughs> but these are just physical things. Right, right, right. These are just things that will cause people inside. to go under the knife. Exactly. What Jennifer's got inside doesn't cut the mustard. I was watching, if that's too <laughs> harsh to say, <laughs> doesn't cut the mustard. Yeah. I said wow. it, you heard it right here. You threw but that gauntlet down. I did. Yeah. I was watching that episode the other night and thinking of you guys and excited to come over because I was thinking, oh my goodness, we're all going to make so much fun of her little show with the impressions. But then I come here and you guys are like, oh, I thought they were great. To me, it felt like that thing of like, you just don't let it, when you're in comedy and when you watch somebody trying to do comedy and everybody laughing hysterically, but you know it's bad, that that's tough to watch. I thought it was going to be so bad. Like I thought, and to, to actually see her capture their essence on some level or another, imitations are hard. And people that do Very imitations hard. are fucking weird. And so like it's to get it, I thought was, I mean, again, when someone. Well, you know what? Imitations <laughs> aren't that hard. You just kind of have to hear someone for a second and then you can do it. I disagree. Wow, that was pretty good. That was better than Jen. No, that was a good you. imitation Go. of me. That was a good one. Jen oh. is just looking at her as like, just so. It just. Mm-hmm. Ugh, mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't even have words. So there's just something very inflaming about her. Even though I remember last week I was saying you I was getting her into last her. Week. Yeah. You really were into Not her. Because of the impersonations you liked her. She but, won me over. But she was, I mean, how about at her birthday weekend or whatever the hell it was? And she was like, she said that she didn't like you. And that started a weird shooting war that no one could come back to Jennifer about because it was her birthday. <laughs> but she was the idiot who started it all. She started it between love her. Uh, Dolores. Dolores and New girl oh, other girl it. jen no, no that's jennifer um the jackie jackie, jackie, jackie. Gold, gold goldsmith gold jackie's star? a very divisive character in our household really let's tall, hear the- cannot my wife tall cannot stand her i don't like her um you guys would get along and i think that she's been kind of victimized this year i, I think she's getting punished and i think the one thing she said to Teresa, which was ill-advised ill-advised but true like yeah, you don't say it. She you, just made a misstep there. But she also wouldn't back down on it genuinely. Yeah. If she hadn't done that, she would have been okay. And then she did write that news or that article. To get insulted after this is I don't even think what she said about Joe was that bad. It was it was ill advised, but she had a point. She did. She but she 
comes off as a hypocrite because she did make fun of Jen's house and Jen's parenting style. And what, even though she bought it back, she did. And then to get Which insulted. Is also a good point. Yeah. But yes. here's place. the problem. She's like yeah. the Heather Dubrow. She's just oh, elevated yeah. from them. And so they hate her and mm-hmm. they have to drag her down in the That's muck with true. them. Well, also there was a, come with me on this one. A little undertone of anti-Semitism. Yeah, I oh, believe we, that. That's we, all we hear about people like, yeah. it's so anti-Semitic. Dolores you just like, raised different. You're not one of us. Yeah, yeah. She's like, you're not like us. Uh, yeah. And in, her, in Dolores' didn't... defense, she's not anti-Semitic because she sat on Rabbi Jules <laughs> Iglesias. Rabbi Hershon's <laughs> lap. <laughs> Iglesi, Iglesi Farb's lap. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so just put that out there. Yeah, I just that's want to put funny. that. I feel like Jackie was like, I'll let other people say this in a way because it was so obvious yes but nobody did no one but said they're it. not going to i yeah, guess maybe no, she was waiting the... for america to uh, say it yeah. you know melissa keeps coming off better and better to me as the seasons go on like i think early so on melissa's when... re- i'm so sorry to go ahead, off, but melissa's ahead. reminding me of how tamra used to be with heather dubrow which is just someone who's not bright being like a smart person likes me and like i'm suddenly jumping through class hoops that i never would have gotten through i think i i perceive melissa as a little smarter i guess than tamra i would say yeah i guess you're right yes just, i agree with that but, assessment but also she just her life seems kind of good yeah it seems like, great i really love joe yeah, you know, too. he's Love awesome. He's, he's hilarious. Awesome. He is and a housewife. Kids, he yeah, is he's for awesome. sure a member of the Their housewife. kids are cute. And, and, and the old, the Their oldest, kids are... The oldest daughter preserves the memory of the way Melissa used to look. Yo, for sure. <laughs> Before all the surgeries. And I also want to say their youngest son... You. I'm just saying, the memory I, of the I would say you. The youngest Melissa's son is... gorgeous. Is, she is. The youngest son is, what, 10? And he has like a full mustache. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah they're virile. Yeah. and trying to have more yeah who knows i will also say that guys i think Teresa judici brings down the show mm, i like that she take. doesn't well they're getting offer us anything and right. hasn't because now years. that she's changed since she started doing yoga in jail yeah like she just there's nothing there she's You're been right. and she has she's been through a lot the family's been through a lot she's like a piece of wood she but is. she's got a lot of anger this season but, that's she's been, not, but it's it not coming come out. out but it is a little bit at the eh, you're right it's not as much it's but she's not as the raw thing. she's these not these shows you know uh lisa vanderpump your number one starter she's gone bethany frankel number one starter she's gone Gumbleson. vicky gone i think uh yeah yeah teresa gone. Could be next. And that's the problem, I think, that we – like Tamra, to bring it back to baseball, mm-hmm. which I'm sure you all are dying oh, yeah. to do. Well, yeah. I'm a, I Tamara, know all Tamara is not a number one starter. Vicky was. Yeah. Like Tamara cannot carry that team no, she the way Vicky oh, could. No. And wait till New York falls apart without Bethany, which we've seen before. It's going to be all borderline on what Bethany is, is the best housewife of all time. Wow. Wow. Has to be. I, don't, I didn't even really like her that much, but I respect her. It's like LeBron. I right. don't like LeBron, but I think he's great. And I think, you know, this, the team would crumble without him or her. Wow. And on that note. Wow. <laughs> Any big thoughts on Jersey this season besides? What were we just talking about? <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. any more clothes. I meant, like, clothes. You want me to do a musical number? <laughs> <laughs> um, Honestly? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, any, but any, parting like, thoughts. parting thoughts parting on Jersey? Thoughts. Well, the, you know, sad about Teresa and Joe, but again, they both seem like they're probably going to be happier. They'll be fine. <clears throat> um, Margaret just, I mean, the Danielle was still the phantom menace of the season. Yeah. Like she was barely on the show, but she had such an effect on the dynamic, yes. which was crazy. And I'd kept, like to see more of her. I know. I never thought I'd say that. Never. never. But we kind of need her. We do and need. I just love that Teresa's whole thing of like, I just, I just didn't get why they was all attacking Danielle. <laughs> they was all attacking her. And like, literally, <laughs> really? she's, Again, you're she, a phenomenal. She's, that's a great impression. She's famous for her table thumping speech of calling her a prostitute and married 19 19- like. I think it had such an effect on Danielle's daughters that when Teresa went and apologized to the daughters, I think something like. I don't know what happened there. It's deep, and they're mm-hmm. done with that chapter. And they she are apologized then, to her daughters. But I don't then know. to have no understanding of why someone would ever go after Teresa doesn't have that 
ability to see two things at once. Mm. <laughs> Doesn't she? That seems like a critical piece of human behavior. Yeah, I, was like, I don't think she does. Wait, what happened that? when I ran the stop sign before? <laughs> I don't think she's able to. No, no she I doesn't have any sort of complex thought. No. She's not a complex thinker. No, 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 no. no, 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 and no, for, no. You could say the same for many of them on the show. I still love, I'm still rooting for... Uh, I f- keep forgetting Dolores. her name. Dolores, Dolores and, and Frank. Frank. More than Chris. Is that his name? Oh, Chris is... God. Chris. want to talk about... Oh, here he goes. <laughs> He's burping. Burping again. <laughs> People are trying Chris, to just listen to this. <laughs> Chris, uh, I apologize <laughs> to listeners up. for the burps more than anything else. <laughs> but no, the, the guy... What's his name? Dan? Chris? Mark? The doctor? <laughs> That's Chris, I believe. But Chris. We're probably People wrong. Tweet looks, us and let us know. He looks ill. Yes. Every time you see him, he he's looks, gray. He His is, skin is... <laughs> he's, he's like a gray person. And I always like looking very weak next to Frank, who's like the Hulk. Frank is, Frank the is Hulk. so... He's so full. He does look very gray. I've thought that he's myself. He's a gray person. And he's like sunken in a parka. And, you know, it's like <laughs> you don't know what's going on underneath. It's such a crazy <laughs> to see him across from Frank. I and know. Frank looks like he's been blown up. Like he's full of like... Remember how in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory when she's full of blueberry juice? Yes. And they have to like go squeeze mm-hmm. around? That's, <laughs> that's right. And then the conversation is about like getting Dolores to finish this kitchen or this reno, but it's like so clearly about them and Dolores. It's like you gotta push her. It's like, oh it's <laughs> so weird. I, it's amazing. And he's Frank having the conversation with sickly Chris or whatever his name is, just like how are, are we taking this thing to the next level? And like then reporting back, I don't know if he's gonna take it to the next level. It's so weird. It's, it's so clear that Delor uh, Frank obviously must have cheated on Dolores like bad like yeah. it must have been really bad yeah because he's in a permanent dog house he's got that face of like you know <laughs> i know i did something wrong but i'm here now and i'm fixing right. things oh my god alec Thank we're gonna you let you go you're a Thank pleasure you. an absolute a pleasure. pleasure now this is so stupid but is it okay if i say hi to my cousin who is your biggest fan please and she's getting married <gasps> She's getting married, my little cousin Emily Kaplan. Oh, Emily Kaplan! Emily Kaplan. When's the big day? Uh, it's uh, the very inconvenient date of Sunday, January twentieth. <laughs> Happens to be the same day as the conference championship games in football. Oh, but, uh, no! Wow. I'm just saying it was brought up. It was brought by up. you? No, I mean, it was by brought you? up to me. My right. others complain. By Emily, I don't, I don't think Emily so. Emily Kaplan is a... She Emily, loves, stick with your date sounds lovely. She yeah. loves your show. Thank loves you, it. Emily. Aww. So I wanted to say hello to her, and I'll see you at the wedding. Hi, Emily. Emily. I'll and see don't, you in the corner when I'm checking. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll be checking stats or scores oh, or whatever, whatever it is. is. Well, yeah, I have to check. MC the rehearsal dinner. Wow. wow. Big kick, big kick. And you know, I Hold lo- back on your thoughts on Emily, uh, I, I love you aesthetic. very much. <laughs> Congratulations, and, Emily. Yeah. And thank you for listening to the show, and it's going to be a gorgeous winter wedding. Alec, please tell us where we can find you online, because you are so fucking funny on Twitter. Oh, thank you. Well, you can find me on Twitter. That's it. And what's your, well, what's your I'm, at? It's at the sulk. Famously at, at the sulk. Famously at the sulk, sometimes infamously at the sulk, yeah. but now they're just mostly dumb like dad joke puns so but they're still you know so funny still enjoyable so funny thank you you're nice to say you're and the then best you're hilarious family guy truly your still wife tall. she loves you guys i love she her i love her studio her meditation studio the den mm. oh my god She's I've, the had, best. I've had some real moments there happy holidays happy hanukkah to you both Thing. That felt pointed. You pointed. <laughs> pointed. Guys, you know what? We can never please you guys. <laughs> you know- oh! wow, I can think wow, of a way. Wow. <laughs> 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 oh my god, guys. Oh. I love you both. Oh, yeah. thank you. I'm getting there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's take a break. We're back. Danielle has, in fact, I given get me a her Christmas gift. And you said it wasn't worthy of talking about it on the podcast. I didn't think it was. But it is. <laughs> you gave me two incredible books. They just felt both very you Oh, my God. Me. I wanted this book so badly. And I was just going to order it. Mm-hmm. But here it is. Here it is. A Song for You, My Life with Whitney Houston, Robin Crawford. Yeah. 
her um her one time girlfriend mm-hmm. and then long time friend. This is thrilling. Wow, I just I saw it and I was like, God, Casey needs. You this. know, we had a sing along at my house last she week did. with some friends and. God, yeah. I'll tell you, there's nothing like singing the greatest love of all with and a group. And also, I you don't wanna, get to do it every day. No, you sure don't. And also, I want to dance with somebody. We That's sing both. a great, a perfect God damn song. it, if the piano player really, he really plunked it out for he us. He plunked. That's a hard one. No, no. And that's a hard one. Don't you want to dance? Don't you want to dance? That's, that's hard. hard to like, yes, get on the keys. Really and really got do. to it. Yeah, yeah no, got at it. Great. Wow. A I song for you, Robin Crawford, and Razzle Dazzle, The Battle for Broadway by Michael Rydell. I mean, this is Danielle. I've heard it's quite You've outdone good. yourself. I've heard it's quite The good. thrilling history of the great white way. Yes, please. Okay. Let's just talk Atlanta. Yep. <clears throat> before we go. Okay. Um, I, I liked this episode a lot. You know, Kenya, it really made me laugh when Cynthia was talking about Kenya's breasts and she's just... I mean, she went on and on and on. Yeah, I think for a moment, yeah. there was an attraction between those two 100%. women. 100%. I think mainly coming from Cynthia. Oh, for Kenya. sure. I don't think Kenya was as Cynthia into Cynthia was like, those are the biggest breasts I have ever no, seen. Cynthia's always had sort of an thing for Kenya, yeah. I believe. I, I believe there was an attraction there. Kenya was really cracking me up this episode because when she said, Marlo is always pulling something crazy out of her ass. Sometimes it's an 80-year-old dick. <laughs> that was <laughs> Kenya is so quick. Kenya, Kenya reminds me of Kelly in terms of the like sniper one liners yeah, that are so boom, fucking boom, nasty. Boom. When Marlo pulled up with that weird ass, like I don't even know what it was. It was like a bike for eight <gasps> where you had to pedal, pedal and drink, and no, and do a hookah. But there hookah. also drink. It was a hookah, hookah, hookah. <laughs> Sorry. They're second, looking you know, at Lyra just going, hook up. You know, because <laughs> she's young. You know, when I immediately turned away from you, turned my body to Lyra and said, hook up, hook up. And Lyra's I'm just you, looking like, out the window. I'm looking out the window at our little devilish elf on a shelf that I put in a tree outside the window. Oh, he Do looks you see so him? cute. Oh, my God. He does. So we were sitting and saw elf on the shelf the other day and was like, I want one of those. I was like, that doesn't happen for us. <laughs> hey, Danielle. Not so fast. <laughs> we do Santa. Bench. David oh, was like, they got to stop trying to make mention no, of bench No, I don't like happen. when I don't like when we try and have our alternate thing. I, I like the original. Like we're gonna do Hanukkah. We're gonna do Christmas. Right. We don't need a mention on a bench. He's a little scary. All right. <laughs> 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 I, look again my children are jewish i'm just like leanne <laughs> yes, you do. and i have slept with many jewish men no, i know you, you know prefer. I, I would say you've probably slept with more jewish men than i am 100 is sure. my strong preference yeah greatest guys ever you like them circumcised give you circumcised dick or give you nothing <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what's happening today. You really have had a lot of dice on ghost. <laughs> okay, Atlanta. Um, it was just so fun watching them smoke the hookah. <laughs> the hookah. <laughs> it's like when you know you say a word over and over and suddenly it just loses all its syllables. Yes, you. yeah, you don't know that it doesn't seem like a word really that means banana. it. No. <laughs> it uh, was, that was a weird, like, uh, that was a weird play date, if you will. Yes, between Marlo and... And then and when Portia. that guy from Portia's job pulled up on the side. And Portia immediately, he pulled up in his in his Porsche, I yeah. think. Uh-huh. Uh, and Portia immediately started twerking in his face. Like, <laughs> like within her. a half a millisecond of him arriving, she was twerking. I love Portia. I, I felt like too. Portia's getting her lightness back. Yes, she it is. It felt like with this episode, we're seeing Portia coming out of basically postpartum i did also, not come out in the way she is no. just like emotionally spiritually and my husband and i were still together until like the, right now she is a phoenix she can she yeah. can handle anything she really can uh okay nini and her life coach <laughs> okay when i believe her name was tamara and claire appeared. I was the life coach. Wig will know when yes Tamara Wig, help appeared, us <laughs> It was a it was a surprise because Greg and Nini had been preparing drinks for who I thought was a friend because they poured a lot of Tito's to give and and ch- and chips and salsa. I'm like, oh okay, who's coming a over? Marlo's coming, coming, over, coming yeah. in, you know. And I'm not saying a life coach is a doctor, but you should treat Probably. yourself with a gravitas as a life and coach. And nor nor are they a therapist. No, but. Still. They're next on the chain. Yeah. So to come in. And she was like, here you go, girl. Yeah, and they was- hunkered down with those vodkas. And she was like, what's going on? And I realized Nini needs a paid friend. Wow. Well, if anyone fucking tags her, because we all know we're friends now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll come for you. 
are you a paid friend of hers? Maybe. No, would be in a she didn't have to pay me to be friends. But I was like, oh, Nini is at the point where literally she's paying someone to come over and affirm every single thing she's yes. saying. And she's in fact now setting it up like friendship. Nini doesn't know how to have any friends. No. She certainly does not. And I feel so she's her. paying people to say that she's doing the right thing and that she's great. Because I do feel like even the life coach was hearing some things from Nini and kind of getting a look on her face like, huh. But she was like, that's right. And you're at a point in your life where you don't need to take that. But she was kind of she, to know anything about Nini is to know that Nini needs so much help and so much work. I love Nini, but Nini is is Mimi is, is, is a narcissist, yeah, and she can't get over herself. No matter all the, I mean, she needs deep therapy. I don't. How funny that, was it when Tanya announced to Nini that they were going to Toronto? Nini's <sighs> face and and. I've got some blowback from some stuff I said last week about Canada. And I would oh, like to... Oh, I love Canada. Oh, and that's the thing. It's like, you. I didn't say any... I, it was just said as though you would say like St. Bart. Exactly. What I meant, I love Canada and we are hoping to tour there. FYI, everybody. <laughs> okay. This is, now we see why you're apologizing. No, but I'm just saying I love, I've had so much good times in Vancouver. You've had so much good times <laughs> in Vancouver. <Okay. laughs> you know what? Look... All I'm saying is what I meant was yes. not that Canada and all of its glory isn't a wonderful place. I'm just saying it is not a tropical location where you think of like carnival. That's all. That's Nor is it the spirit with which Tanya was presenting it to everyone. Exactly. It was truly like it just felt we were going to have a different yeah. A more Caribbean yes. vibe. And when you say carnival, you think carnival. I mean, look, the expression on Nini's face was... Said it all. Pr priceless. Priceless. Exactly. It was good to have Cameron back on the show. We haven't seen her in a little while. Not in a while. And it was mm -hmm. really nice seeing... I like seeing Candy with her best friend. Especially now that Cameron's not working for her, I think it's a better relationship for them when they're sort of a little more on even footing. Sure. It seems... It I seems mean, to be. I will say also, Todd, you know, I used to worry about Todd. I don't like Todd. Look, he, OLG is kicking. Like, now he's trying to do OLG breakfast. It's like just add breakfast that's to the no, menu. I think it's a great idea. I think it's a great idea. Okay. I trust him. And what him. was the other thing he's opening? Like a Who's having Mack trucks or something? What was that? Yeah, he, he bought a Mack truck. A trucking business? I just feel like he's scattered. He's well, all over the place. I also feel like... I don't like when there's these men, they're married to like powerful, powerful, yes. powerful women running full corporations. They're like, I could do that. It's but like, I, no, will say, I did not trust Todd and I did not have it for him, but I also think he has showed us with OLG... You know, are we so sure it's doing well? I think they are franchise now. I think they opened up a second one and now they want a breakfast nook. Okay. Again, do I trust Todd completely? No, I think Candy is the 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 bread and butter of this business. Yes, just, I just hope Todd's not just like pulling a Peter and like running off with Candy's money on these. But whims. Peter never had any success. He's like, yeah, I'll start a business about your aunt. Bar one, <laughs> bar two, by bar three, bar four, they all bar were five, failures. Bar six, yes, bar seven, every bar was a failure. Yeah, but Candy. She's just getting richer by the day. You're right. She is a success. You're this dungeon right. tour. Thank you. It's a right. success. Look, I, I feel like Atlanta is fun. I need to start getting to the bottom of this voicemail or, or rather yes. like what the, is this? the voice get, memo. And I, I need to get into that pretty quick. I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to. This that I'm holding. It better be really. If you're going to hold yes. it this long, I it's need gotta, more Nini overall. Although every time I'm like, where the fuck is Nini? Then she appears. That so is true. I feel true. like they're 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 strategically placing her. I'm also... Let me say one more thing. I'm okay, sorry. sorry. It just feels that there's a clear difference between a Nini and a Vicky. It's like, it's hard to watch because it's like, Nini is saying like, oh, all right, fine. I'll just be a featured player, but like, I'm not going to be more. And Vicky's like devastated at her status. Mm -hmm. of, and it's interesting to just watch those two matriarchs kind of... Well, I think Nini has more security in herself, oh, but, but in herself, like, security. yeah, yeah. But I think her Nini has, is not as insecure. Like Vicky is the most insecure human being I've ever set eyes on. I've never met someone really? as damaged as Vicky is. I'm sorry to go back, but it, she's going to really fucking show off her fucking homophobia next week when she's like, I don't like girls kissing. I'm sorry. <sighs> I don't. I'm the leader of this show. Turn it down. Yeah. Turn it down. Turn it down. 
fuck off, Vicky. She's just well, she's and she's just a prude. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. in a way that's not. You know, like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. what are you, a thousand years old living in a different century? Like, I, it's just, and yet she, it's one of those things where, like, she, I think, is the most hypocritical housewife we've mm. ever had. She's a lot of things more than we've ever had. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I repeated myself a lot. No, but no, you haven't. I'm just saying because we can ascribe so many words to her. I know. I mean, she, and she's also been with us the longest, so we've known sure. her. But Nini's been with us a long time, too. Both of their faces have changed drastically from their first season to now. See, Nini to me is just so Nini. Yeah. Well, Nini... I mean, Nini's been with Greg since the beginning. Though she'll they always did, be my Nini. She'll always be. And Nini is fun and funny. Vicky is not fun and Vicky is not funny. I mean, funny. Nini can be mean as a snake, but yes. Oh, yes. 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 And no, you're right. You're right. And I think Nini is broken, but smart. I don't think Vicky's a smart person. I predict when Tamara is kicked off the show, inevitably Vicky will start to fall away and maybe be like a lunch that she'll host for everyone in one episode or something. That's a good call. Cause Tamara isn't coming back next season. I'm calling that. Wow. Okay. And Tamara's Shannon, not back. Shannon will stay. Shannon will stay. Vicky's, I mean, um, I think Tamara's gone. Okay. She's well, wrong, of course. And one more thing else? to say about um, what was that weird male voiceover at the end of Atlanta? Did you hear it this week? Like in the scenes from next time, it was like, <laughs> what? Like it, it was like this weird man. But I was like, what's happening? I feel like sometimes they will try things out on Atlanta. Like they're like, let's let's see how this goes. Yeah, and it's like strange. It was like a weird male voiceover. I, it's I weird know. when sometimes the franchises don't match up. Like in Dallas, you know how if, at the like in the season finales they freeze the women and then they tell their updates. Yes, Dallas did this like almost like really bad like computer. Yes, animated thing. It was weird. It was strange. So you know, I'd like a little more uniformity. Yeah, I agree. But it's it's. It's I still love small, it. small yes. grapes. <laughs> um, I'd like to plug a show which is keeping up with the, with the Kardashians season <laughs> this finale. This new little show that I think could use my support. What? what? Uh, okay, it's the fucking funniest thing ever. What okay, it, I mean, people are. I saw Amy Schumer tweeted about it because it was so funny. What happened? Speaking of impressions. All the gals, <laughs> I'm sure a producer obviously came up with this, but all the gals, each of them dresses up like another and they come to dinner as the other one. And it's genuinely hilarious. Really? Yeah, to see Kim and Courtney play each other and how much they hate each other. It's really <laughs> fun. It's just genuinely really fun to see Chloe take on Chris. Great, great, great stuff. Wow. Kendall doing Kylie. It felt really good. Of course, Kylie didn't show up because she's like, I don't need to. She's like, I have bajillions of dollars. Yeah, like I'm all set. Didn't it's know she'd great. be the most successful. Of course we didn't. Um, Danielle, I, I want to wish our listeners such happy holidays. Me too. Everyone stay safe. Everyone stay drunk. I hope everyone's so healthy, you know, above all else and, yes. and happy and peaceful and gets nice family time. And we thank you guys for a wonderful year um, for listening. Yes, we love I'm you guys. I'm so grateful to all of our listeners that we get to just just have a moment of fun and sometimes be little nasties <laughs> just little, be we little, were nasties. Real little nasties today but we love you guys but we're nasty about everybody else my not goal you guys. is to really shake all that off for next year and i'm sure i'll <laughs> I'm do well start bright in the new year really yes. with love and support and kindness, for my fellow man that's why everyone tunes in yeah this. they want to hear us support yep people supporting people and lift up these housewives yeah lift them way up I hope everyone knows we would never speak about friends or any women or any of you like this know that this uh, is reserved for this franchise you. no <laughs> I'm kidding this is reserved for this these special broads that's yeah, what they are that's what they are we love them we hate them we're grateful for them every day and we're grateful for you guys yeah happy holidays happy Hanukkah <laughs> <laughs> And thank you, Lyra. Thank you, Lyra. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you, Dana. Thank you, everyone at Earwell. Thank you, July. Bye.